Um, this is a little, I don't know, $233 for the bearing. It'll be here in the morning. Thank you, Trace. Uh, he has called everybody in the I country know. trying to locate this because we know MESDA will take three weeks to get back to us on whether they even know what we're talking about. And then I'm sure this <laughs> would be $1,000. Um, it's two thirty three from uh, FSK, and it's kind of a cunning device. I just didn't expect to see it pressed on the shaft. No. I expected it in the end of the motor. <laughs> and so in pulling the rotor uh, to try to find our little pieces, um, I broke off the cable right there. So we've done two basic things wrong. One, yank the cable off the bearing, and two, rely on MESDA's drawing and photographs and assume that we could use these bolt holes to mount to our adapter plate. This assembly couldn't hold my wristwatch. It looks like it was done by kids. Terrible engineering. We're going to do a very crude replacement about that thick. Holds all the way through to the case. Another hole here and a dowel pin. This area was never explained to us at all. We don't know what it's for. This boss is, of course, to, to uh, locate your center. This doesn't have enough edge on it to be anything, but it doesn't then also bear any uh, weight on the face of the adapter. So I don't know what it's for. We're going to have that uh, flat, and this will, will extend with material out to the edge and basically be a machine billet. Um, that thick and um, I think we're going to run some screws all the way through all the, the adapter end of the, plate into the cast iron body into the cast iron in addition to the dowel and yes Victor I can not only question your Swiss engineers brilliant work we can probably fix it We won't be buying anything further from MESDEA or Metric Mind and would not recommend you entrust them with any of your hard-earned Ducats because there is no product support or responsibility for the product. If they ship it to you and it arrives broken, his story is not my problem, man. And we have to get past that level of amateur um, kids playing at businesses in the EV industry for it to be viable. I hope those people clear out of that industry as quickly as possible uh, to the profit and good fortune of the many good vendors out there that are slaving heroically to enable you to change the world with these electric cars. And that's what I've got to say about that. But generally, a lesson learned, um, a long supply chain is not good for an army. Uh, it wasn't for yeah. Napoleon, <laughs> and it isn't for you. If you can't get parts and you can't get support and at least get an explanation of a why or how you should mount it, um, don't buy it. Um, uh, unfortunately, that's, that's the gig. Had we mounted this uh, to what, I don't know on these holes, uh, this would not have happened. MESDA, a uh, total bullshit artist, it had nothing to do with the mounting on the other end. This cannot be used for mounting at all. It's an absurd notion, and you should have known better. Uh, four weeks ago, that, that was the problem. This is not sufficient strength to mount anything I wouldn't mount this on the wall by those holes <laughs> and trust like nice it to hold clock. itself up. It wouldn't make a good clock. That's what we'll do is we'll put some clock hands, hang this on the wall, remind me not to be stupid in the, in the future. But um, I'm, uh, I'm culp culpable as well. I didn't know this was so thin, but um, I should have noticed this bracket thing, which looks bizarre to me. I don't know how you would mount the uh, motor securely uh, from this one hole like this, but uh, these holes go into cast iron and would hold it very well. 
And I shouldn't have ripped the uh, cord off the uh, sensor well. bearing. But we should have that. By Monday, we'll have this. Our uh, flywheel is now balanced. Oh, yeah. I'm that's sorry. Cool. You were right. We're, we're ready to go. Grams of material, it, it, it wasn't the problem. Um, the um, thrust bearing, I don't think that was a problem. Um, the, uh, I've never used one before. Um, I, it won't hurt anything. Um, the carriage bolts, probably a good call. Uh, call Malvary. Let's talk about our uh, controller for not this project, uh, for Speedster Part Duh. Speedster Duh. When Professor Ferdinand Porsche presented his first car in 1900 at the World Fair in Paris, everyone was astounded. An electric drive, two wheel hub motors. On the one hand, it was a sensation, but on the other, people quickly agreed, it won't work. Too bold, too fast, 50 kilometers per hour, it'll send the horses crazy. And now, it was bound to happen. The assignment, do everything differently, differently than expected. Do whatever you will, but don't touch that Porsche crest. Result, concept study Porsche 918 Spider, high performance hybrid. The design, more Porsche than ever to turn in fabulous times on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Economically driven at about three liters per 100 kilometers and with CO2 levels of about 70 grams per kilometer. A contradiction? Not at all. We call it Porsche Intelligent Performance. Marine, let's talk about our uh, Speedster Park Duh. Great. I'm ready to go. I uh, have been fighting brain on this one. The whole mission is to keep the Speedster Park Duh <laughs> simple. And I tend to overbuild. And our whole mission was to do this one a little more elegantly and not get so carried away as the first one. Well, I, I think we're on the right track. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, uh, uh -huh. everybody's using uh, water glycol to cool motors and controllers. Mm -hmm. That's all the big boys, all the big systems. So I want to do that too. All right. Now I want to tell you why I want to do that. What we're using is, of course, the high performance golf cars, AC50. That's their largest AC motor. Yes. And we'll get regen. And I like these guys. Yep. They're great. They are using an off-the-shelf controller. It's the Curtis Model 1238-7501, which is uh, Curtis's um, new uh, attempt at a uh, three-phase AC controller. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about this a little bit. All the EVs out there that people have done, I would say half of them, not, not just, uh, yeah, most of the EVs out there, over half, right. use a Curtis most. Model 1231 controller. It's famous for heat problems. Oh, okay. But Curtis yeah, has made controllers for many, mm -hmm. many years mm -hmm. for forklifts. And so that's how it got into the EV into community. EV community, right. It's kind of out of favor these days because a lot of people have developed better controllers than the Curtis Model 1231, which would occasionally blow up, usually from a heat problem. And so, ergo, the Zilla, 
Uh, what's the new one? The Solartron so- now. Um, from Evianetics. Um, of course, um, uh, over at... Um, is it EV Source? They have the uh, um, net gain label. The, the, the net um, right. controller. Right. Um, so a lot of new controllers on the market. The mm-hmm. Zilla is back in production, uh, thanks to our buddies over at EV Components. Um, so we have controllers that'll do an immense amount of power in the DC time zone. Finding a controller at a reasonable price for 